Hello folks and welcome to this lecture. Today I want to talk about the cluster setup and how we can configure a cluster in a NetApp storage. So let's get started. Uh, the first thing that we have to know that we have different methods for uh, having our cluster and for just spinning up our cluster together. Uh, we have single node, we have two node switch less, we have multi node switch and we have metro cluster. So first one is single node uh, cluster. Uh, this one is actually a special implementation of the of a cluster that runs on a standalone node. So we have just one node, that's it, just one controller. And on that controller, we have everything. We have the disks and all the related components. Uh, usually we use this one when we don't need to use some specific features. Uh, as an example, uh, in the single node, we have just one node and this is one node as a cluster. It is, although uh, although we call it cluster, but it's just a one node. Uh, let's say it's node one, and you have your servers, and this, your servers they can access uh, to this node, to this storage. I'm just drawing some very, very basic picture here. So we have servers that are connected to uh, this is connected actually to the second port. So these are clients here, and this is the, the storage which is serving data to the clients. So we have just one node. I'm talking about the single node. So we have just one node. If something goes wrong with this node, uh, let's say we have a problem on this one, it goes down. So you have problem on your clients, on your on your machines, on your servers, whatever. Let's say this is a SQL server. This is a uh, I don't know file server, database, whatever. Uh, they can't access the data anymore. So it's not good for uh, let's say important data or important services. We have co something called NDO in uh, NetApp environment. We call it non-disruptive operation. So non-disruptive operation, uh, it means that you can work with your storage. Uh, you can do, so for example, upgrades of your storage without having any downtime. So if you need NDO, if you need non-disruptive operations, then this scenario, the, the first method, it's not working for you because you can't do the upgrade non-disruptively. It's going to be disruptive. Uh, imagine I want to upgrade the untap uh, OS on this box, I don't have any choice. I have to, I mean, reboot this, this controller during the upgrade and our clients can't access to the data on that time. So it's, it's not good if you need NDO and usually we use it in the remote offices. And because this is just one node, um, you don't have some features and operations that, that needs more than one node. For example, um, we don't have storage failover operation on this one. We can't fail over to another uh, node because there is no, there is no other node here. Uh, we don't have any high availability. We don't have any HA here. And anything related to multi-node operations, we can't do it on the, the, uh, the single node method. Another thing is something called infinite volumes. Infinite volumes must contain aggregates from at least two nodes. So therefore, we can't have infinite volumes because it's not supported on a single uh, node cluster. So this is a single node. Most of the time when I'm working in production environments or in, uh, let's say, real world environments, uh, I never seen single node cluster. Very rarely we work with the single node ones because it is very vulnerable to the uh, to whatever problems that you have in your environments. So you don't have any uh, NDO and you don't have any HA or high availability. And high availability, it's uh, it's give you fault tolerance and you can have takeover and givebacks uh, when you have high availabilities and when you want to uh, just replace a hardware, a hardware or replace a cable or you have a single point of failure somewhere, you can avoid this with the high availability. So you have actually, you're going to improve your data availability with the, with the HA. So HA is really, really uh, important. And um, we need an HA interconnected. I'll talk it talk about it in the, in the next slide related to the um, uh, HA uh, connections. 
but uh, that's a single node. If I want to go to the next one with the uh, two node cluster, the design is really simple. Now you have two nodes. And as you can see, it says switch less. It means we don't need any switch to connect these nodes together. Usually there's some cables from one node to another node. Uh, which just guarantee that you have HA between these two nodes. This is node one, let's say this is node two. So you have HA right now and you have your servers which are here to just access to the, to the storages for uh, having access to the uh, data. Uh, and there are network switches here in the middle to some basic pictures again. So one cable here, one cable here. Uh, let's say this is connected to this guy here somewhere and this is connected to this guy here somewhere and you have the data flow between the uh, between your server to the storage from this cable let's say in case something goes wrong with this controller then you can have access to this guy and going to your data so you have the HA when you have a two node uh, switch less there's no switch here and it's just work for the for two nodes because if you have more than two nodes then that's going to be a problem because we need a switch at least uh, for having connections between these uh, so let's see what if i have more than let me erase these guys here and let's say i have more than two storages so now I have four storages here so now it should be different so although you have your HA connectivity between nodes but uh, these are HA pair so we have one pair here and we have another pair here in order to be able to have a unified object or unified cluster for all of these nodes we need to actually connect them to a switch so we have to have a switch we need to connect them to a switch, this one also, and this one. Uh, now we can have them as a unified uh, cluster. Usually we have two switches for redundancy purposes. So another cable here, another one here, another one here, another one here. And this is just a uh, four nodes cluster. And we have two HA pairs here. We can have more nodes depend on our um, scenario and our models. But definitely we need this. And this is not for clients, this is, uh, this is the cluster interconnect so this is a cluster interconnect and the purpose of these switches are just for uh, clusters nodes having connectivity to each other that's it so this is the uh, third one actually this scenario it's this uh, multi node switch so we have multiple switches here in this scenario and the next one is the metro cluster um, the, the metro cluster we have zero data loss, we have failover protection, and everything is non-disruptive, uh, same as the other one. But the point is that uh, in the Metro Cluster environment, you're going to imagine that you have two storages, one and two. And whenever you're doing, if you're doing to have any write here on the first storage, uh, you're going to copy this one to another storage, write it there, and then you get the acknowledgement back, and then to the client. So it means that you have zero data loss. If something goes wrong with the first storage, you have all the copies in the second one, and they are synchronized to each other. Uh, we won't talk that much about the Metro Cluster. It, it has some limitations and some implementation concerns, but technically, this is one of the ways that you can protect your data and this is good for having your uh, DR site and you, you can keep your uh, data 100% uh, available in other sites. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial and I'll see you in the next one. I just want to make make this one pretty short. I'll see you in the next one and we'll, we'll talk about the uh, HA pairs and the interconnect between the, these nodes and how they can interact with each other.